me off. <laughs> you know, I, I just felt like the boomer injury strong, was strong for a little bit. It was like we couldn't figure it out, man. <laughs> oh, shit, man. Here we go, man. So, all right. Let me let me pull up my shit real quick. Let me see. Uh, There's some energies working against us, but we rose above it against yeah. all odds. You know against I mean? all odds. Against all odds. Against all odds. Okay, so wait a minute. Let's go ahead and start the show so we can talk about it again. <laughs> So, yeah. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. Welcome to the first segment, another segment of Tales from the Blind Side. I got my brother, <laughs> center stage, Jamal Jackson, and Todd Harriman is with me. Of course, we're going to get into, you know, the game against the Giants and all of that. But now we've had a chance. We've all had a chance to finally listen to Against <laughs> All Odds. Jack, please give us what you... Oh, uh, man. How did you oh. enjoy the album? Uh, all right, so I got through the intro. Okay. So, like the first song, because I wanted to just hear him. It's okay. only uh, it's only two songs on, on on the whole entire album where it's just him rapping, and, it, and, the, and the first song is one of them. So you know, I, I mean, it's not bad. You know, like for, for, for it to be like a a uh, 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 aging wide receiver in the NFL to make a rap album at what age thirty three, it's not bad. It's not bad. Not saying I'm bumping it all week, but you know I had to get a couple of listens in. I mean, I, 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 you can hear the West Coast in it. It's all yeah. West Coast, like I mean, yeah. the whole rhythm, the beat, everything, man. But it wasn't bad. I was, you know, just skeptical of some of the, you know, some of the lyrics here and there. But you know, it's rap. It's rap. So what can you, what can you do? <laughs> it was, but, that's a, know, that's a good way of saying it is rap. It's rap. You know? You know, so uh, it, it, it wasn't bad, man. Like, I, it's definitely I actually, rap. I didn't. I, I, I went into it with like, you know, I'm thinking he's from the West Coast, so it might sound something like Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre, uh, produced type thing. But you know, he, he felt he felt well for himself, man. All right, cool. All right. Yeah. yeah. You know, right. I, I don't feel like I don't feel like I really have. The, the background to, to judge a rap album. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, the man so, said so his you know pockets what, the, are heavy. What does that mean? What does that mean? What do you mean you don't have the background to judge a rap album? Like, right. <laughs> you listen to rap, don't you? <laughs> oh, you put me on to most rap shit. <laughs> oh, man. What does that mean? <laughs> oh, man. Hilarious. Okay. I think we lost him again. Uh, yeah, he's frozen. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look at he's frozen. Oh my god, that oh. face. Oh, oh man. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So that is Todd right there. So we had to get back to him in a little bit. So Todd, yeah, how, how did you feel about the album? It felt good about it. All right. Cool. I, not, there you go. You're back. Oh, man, you're back. No, he's not. Oh, he's not back. It, yeah, he's not back. It, it, it. All right. <laughs> All right, we're gonna play charades tonight, I guess. <laughs> oh man. So all right. So um Todd so, is well, having to, well, to... is it is it is it his internet access or um, something like that? It's like is the power went out or something over there? Like Man, I don't know. Ty was in probably bumping against all eyes. I don't know. Oh uh, yeah, streaming, you know, yeah. Hey, boy. Oh, I really, I, I'm not very good at critics. Well, there you go. He's back. Okay, there he is. He's back. There we okay. go. There we go. All right. There we go. All right. All right. All right. There we go. There's my brother. There's my brother. All Guys, right. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> the boomer energy oh. is strong today, dude. The boomer energy is strong. You know, it's just, you know, some stain, you know, <laughs> technology is fighting us right now. Who knows? But we're going to get through. No, we're we going. are we are going against all odds right now. Yeah, we're going to hey. push through it against all odds. Against hey. all odds. <laughs> So here we go, man. Let's like let's I go ahead. Saying, like go ahead. Like I was saying when I got cut off, 
Uh-huh. Do your thing, DJ. Keep yes. going. Keep putting out the albums. You got kids. You got a dog. You got a career. And you're putting out rap albums, dude. I mean, the man can do it all. I wouldn't be surprised to see him uh, with a little bit of an acting career here in, in the near future. Possibly. That, that, that would be awesome. I, oh. I, I can see that because it's against all odds. Yeah. So here we go. All right. So let's get into the game now. Let's get into the game because the Eagles pulled this game off, man. 22-21. You know, you come in, you have New York coming into town. You knew that this was going to be a team that, you know, this is going to be a battle of, all right, which one, who, who wasn't going to lose the game? You know, but we did enough to come out of there. 22-21, man. What did you guys feel about it? Good to get a W. Yeah. Always always good to get a W. Um, I just, I, I feel like, you know, we we won a, a solid game in the NFC East, and, and you have to win that game if you're going to, if you're going to be competitive. Um, it it would have been great to see him win it with, with a lot more flash and, and dazzle. But uh, I think that there's, you see some, you're going to go and see some more competitive teams and, and there's definitely some things that uh, are going to get exposed against a, a better team in, down the road. And, and it's great to get a W, but not let it get smoothed over with, you know, uh, success in all areas. And, then, you know, hopefully still improving in those aspects that people will take advantage of down the road. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just thought it was just one of those games where, uh, you know, it was, you know, kind of like one of those coming out games for the offense because they actually got some things moving. It it looked like, you know, Carson was on his A game as far as throwing the ball in the air. You know, of course, he had the one errant throw in the end zone and the, also the, the one play with Troy Aikman was telling the, the young kids at home – uh, what Carson just did, don't do that because he threw the ball off the field. Yeah. I was like, whoa, other than those two plays, I thought he had a solid game. I thought he led the offense how it should be, ran, you know, take what the defense is giving you. And that's what he did. You know, he was finding a little Boston Scott out of the backfield. He made plays for him. You know, uh, D. Jack actually made some plays for him early on until mm-hmm. they put him in, you know, to play hero ball when, you know, they actually had the momentum at that time. I don't think it was even needed for him to be in there in that position. Like this guy hasn't caught punt returns in what, three, four years. And he's older in his career. And of course, yeah, it was a cheap shot and whatnot, but I just don't think at that time he should have been in there. You know, I just think offensively, it was kind of like a coming out party with like the younger guys, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I agree with that whole, you know, putting him out there at that point, there's absolutely no reason that Deshaun Jackson should have been back there at punt return because I mean, He's coming off of injury. You know that he's just battling back to get back on the field. And you put him back out there to try to recreate a miracle at the link or whatever the situation is because Deshaun, he's a giant killer. So you put him out there where the giant got him this time because, I mean, they knew, you know, (laughs) they know the history of what's happened. People have talked about it. So now they go out there and they laid Deshaun out. There was a cheap hit. And now he's – I I think that you've just seen the last of Deshaun Jackson as an eagle because I think he's going to be done for the rest of the season. I mean, now you're talking about a six- to eight-week injury. Yeah, with with an actual fracture, and I I just don't see it happening. But even before you even get into that part of it, you start this game with, with, what, the sixth offensive line up? For the offensive line, the sixth group of offensive line coming in, you got Opetta coming in. You have uh, you move Nate over the right guard. Lane battles back in to come back and play in this game. And of course, Jordan Mailata. This is the sixth offensive offensive line that Carson Wentz has had in front of him. How do you think that the guys protected again in this game? Now they finished the game with three sacks, ten quarterback hits. But overall, how do you guys see the game with with this new group of offensive line that was trotted out there? Hey. And see, I, like that, th- that kind of bothers me a bit because I don't think the Giants were known for their pass rushing abilities, and mm-hmm. like they don't they don't generate pressure. That's one of the reasons why their secondary is so bad. You know, guys got time to sit back there, pack the ball, and you know, just hit targets because mm-hmm. they don't get any pressure. And I thought this line was 
kind of coming into its own, you know, with Jordan Maialata and um, uh, what's the left guard that they moved to the right guard? I, yeah, I don't know. Uh, Nate Herbig. Nate Herbig. You know, I thought he was great on the left side, but you know, you saw some some deficiencies in this game up front. You know, even the new guy that they put, I think Opeta or whatever his name is. Yeah. He he kind of got worked a little bit. So I mean, that'll come with time. But I just think as a as a unit. Offensive, offensive line wise, they took a they took a, a step back. Yeah, yeah. This was this was a tough one. I felt like Jordan. You saw some, you know, a couple moves that gave him some problems. I think Opeta. You saw him just get. I mean, bull rush. I mean, bull rush to the point where the defensive tackle took Opeta back and 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 sacked both he and the quarterback. Yeah. You know. And whenever something like that happens, it's never good when, when you see pressure come like that. So, yeah, we're going to get tied in there, man. Tied, yeah. tied. <laughs> we're going to get you in there. But you know what I'm saying? Whenever you have pressure like that, it's going to be a problem. And then, you know, I think that when you have um, Nate switching from left to right and not really having a week to really focus on the technique of being back on the right side, you saw him drop his post foot way too much which created lanes and created a couple hits. You're going to get that from guys switching them back and forth from right to left, though. I mean, we saw that happening with Peters. When when, when he was playing over a left tackle, he was giving up his inside foot really easily. Mm-hmm. Um, that's something that you, you're not going to get rid of unless you got the time to drill it. And, I, you know, this point in the season, you know, I, these guys are probably not feeling the greatest. They're they're not trying to put in the extra time after practice to take the extra sets and, and, and hold their weight right, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I speaking on the offensive line play, I, I thought they came out in, in the start of the game. I thought they were smacking. They were, they were moving the guys off the ball. They were establishing a line of scrimmage. I thought that they looked great. Their combo blocks looked great, and they were, they were rolling them back. Um, mm-hmm. I feel like either – they're getting away from that as the game goes on or they're getting tired Um, because they're just not, they don't seem like they have that movement as the game goes on. That could be a a conditioning thing. It could just be also a flow of the game type of thing where, you know, you're coming out in the beginning of the game trying to set the tempo and then Mm -hmm. it's a closer game and you're trying to, you know, play catch up at some points and stuff like that. So uh, overall, you know, with, with shuffling guys around again, You know, I thought that they did all right. You know, I I feel bad. Lane's out there hobbling around. You can tell, Mm -hmm. you can tell he's hurting, man. You can tell he's hurting. I I don't know. I I think it's probably a good idea to just give Lane some time to rest, man, and try to get through this next week without him. You know what I mean? Yeah, because I I saw on the one play, it was on that fourth and one, where they tried to run the uh, quarterback sneak. Opeta, but I, I, Opeta tried to drive his man to the ground. And his the defensive tackle clipped Lane's ankle, and that's where you saw Lane start to roll around on the ground right out the gate on that fourth and one. I think that was in the first quarter. Then you fast forward to like the third or fourth quarter, where it was the fourth and one, fourth and three, where they tried to throw that fade route into the end zone. Again, Opeta is out there blocking his guy, takes his guy to the ground, and his his defensive tackle ends up landing into Lane's right knee which now he has a sprained MCL. So, you know, it was just a tough game for him all around. Mm-hmm. You know, when you have a bad ankle, you can't move around like you need to. And then you just uh, – a lot of people don't realize, like, most offensive line injuries are from friendly fire, you know, from guys just out yeah. finish, you know, and it's going to happen. But, you know, there you go. That's that's where Lane gets, gets beat up in, in the game there, and now he's out. For I don't even know how many weeks it's going to be now, right? And then I would I would look at it, you know, like yeah, like I, I I think these guys would would get better and they would benefit from having a lead late in the game <laughs> instead of always having to fight and come from behind. You know, you got to drop back shit, 30, 40 times to come back in, in some of these games. They they're down two scores in the fourth quarter just about every week. So of course that's going to put a lot of strain on your offensive line to try to like get pass protections and blitz pickups down pack. And with the, the guys that they're shuffling in and out constantly every week, six different starting lineups, like you can't expect these guys to play any better than what they're playing right now, you know, with the, with the new bodies. Because you're never going to have Lane 100% healthy, healthy this year if he keeps coming in and out. 
Uh, you don't know when you're going to get some of these other guys back as far as say Amalu and what do you do when Jason Peters come back? Do you put him at right guard? Do you move him back at left tackle if, you know, Jordan continues to struggle? Because the past couple of weeks, albeit, you know, he showed his worth a little bit. He kind of struggled a little bit also, you know. So I don't know what you do in, in a sense of when you get the healthier veteran guys back. Yeah, yeah, but Jordan's going to take some lumps. He's going to have to take mm-hmm. some lumps. There's going to be some growing pains out there, you know. He doesn't have any kind of fucking football experience, yeah. you know what I mean? So uh, it, he's only going to get that by leaving him out there, and hopefully he's learning from it and growing from it, you know what I mean? Is he going to ever grow as a player if they bring Peters back and then put him back at left tackle and then Jordan on the sidelines now, you know? I don't think yeah. that – he's going to continue to develop. And I don't think that they got any more time to wait around with him. No, nah, I don't think so. So, okay, so now that, that just leaves with the JP thing because, you know, they're saying that they put JP on this whole 21-day practice, whatever that – I don't even know what the fuck that means. I mean, this is awesome. <laughs> right. you, know, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, 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 like what, what is that? Like, it's a 21-day practice rule. So I looked it up, and it's like, okay, you, you have – now, since he's coming off of IR, he has 21 days that you can't practice him to decide if you want to put him on the active roster. So, is he I back or say, not? I don't know. I'd say at this point in the season, you'd be lucky to get Peters practicing either way. <laughs> either way. You know what I'm saying? So, and then, and to me, I, I felt like I know a lot of people are saying, okay, put him at right guard. I, I I say, man, if you're going to put him in, you need to put him in at left guard and let Jordan just go ahead and do his thing at left tackle. Because I do oh. think Jordan might be the left tackle of the future. And then you just go ahead and say, all right, JP, we put you in at left guard. You come back, you play left guard. You don't, it's, it's not foreign to you putting you on the opposite side. And, you know, let's just see what he can do. How do you guys see it? I yeah, think. but you, you pay, you pay, uh, Oh, uh, say Amalu at left guard. He's a left guard. He's supposed to be coming back off the IR with the sprained knee. So he's the incumbent starter at that position. So I don't think – yeah, I don't know. It's going to be tough, man. Like, I mean, JP, he's to the point where I think, you know, shit, it's, it's time. Like, he should be, mm. you know. I mean, with, if you mean you, you, you're you checking in and out of games. time for you, what, Jack? Time for hey, what? It's, it's time. It's time to ride off in the sunset, man. Like, <laughs> yeah. You know, it's time <laughs> to say when. It's time to say when. Like yeah. you know, I mean, because if you don't, I mean, you gotta either that or, or or just take that role at right guard, which that's what he started at, in in yeah. camp, and they said he was looking pretty good there. But you know, like you guys said, man, he's a naturally he, he plays on the left side, so. Yeah. However that works out, you know, whether it be hindering the development of Jordan or, you know, bumping um, Sam Malo to the side, something's got to give. But I, I, just think, I just think if he's, if he's ready to go and he's healthy enough, put, he's got to put him out there, at least trying to get through the year. You know, he's, he's an upgrade from Herbig or whoever's at right guard prior. You know what I mean? Yeah. An upgrade there. But you're going to need right, – right now you need prior to play right tackle. Because Jake, Jack Driscoll is down, right? For right. what with, yeah. his, uh, with a high ankle sprain, I believe. And then you have uh, at least I would keep Nate at right guard because he seems to be the type of player that can play both sides. And, and you know, he started out at right guard, then he moved over to left guard once uh, once Isaac got hurt or whatever or whatever the situation was. I don't know. It, it was one of those combinations where they moved Nate over to left guard. So uh, to me, I would just say, all right, JP, since you're more comfortable on the left side. Let's bump you down the left guard. We keep Nate over there at right guard. And all right, let's just ride out from there and just hope that we can make it until Isaac gets back. And then from there, I don't know what you do from there because, I mean, you know, what kind of combination, who knows how much Bro, longer JP is going to give you. Do you imagine, can you imagine how that left side set's going to look? <laughs> oh, my God. Like, if they don't vertical, like, they set out. So it's going to be like a... Fucking revolving door. They gotta open the floodgates, man. They, he gotta change up. Like he gotta like, hey man, at guard, dude, you gotta be compact and square. You can't be kicking out because if you kick out, I mean, that's the direct path to the quarterback. So it's gonna, yeah. it's kind of hard to be like, 
all right, we're going to put him at left guard in the middle of the fucking season. Like, I'd rather he, do that than to put him at right. Hey, he never practiced it. He never practiced left guard. Like, in a game, he, at least he practiced right guard. And well, for, like, much of the way. summer. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I, I, I would much rather keep him at a position where he at least is used to being in that stance. That's you, left that tackle. Is, That's left tackle. Yeah, but you... Okay. Yeah, a left-handed stand, so at least I can put you at guard. And then if he has any mobility issues, at least I can bump him down to guard and have him fight in the phone booth instead of putting him out there in space. Well, see, here's the thing. Y'all keep saying, uh, yeah, I'd rather put JP at guard. He's not a guard. Even though he's a larger-than-life man and he's physical enough to play, he's not a guard. Like, he yeah. is not a guard. He is a tackle, period. But, okay. I mean, we'll see. Yeah, so so then all right, so then so then do you go ahead and just I mention say, yeah, agree to disagree, Jack. I agree to disagree. <laughs> so well, it's not really you, agree to disagree because I've never seen him in a game with all and, due respect. Other than tackles, so. With all due respect, agree to disagree. <laughs> so so all right, so because that would be interesting because I, I want to see how this is gonna play out. Are you going to just say, all right, well, Jordan, hey, man, here, come on back to the bench, big fella. We like what you did for three, four weeks, but JP is back. Yo, I, yeah. I don't know. I, I, I really want to see Jason Peters play guard. I always felt like he'd be just a monster at guard. I've seen him pick up, like, 350-pound men and just slam them. So I, yeah. I want to see him play inside. I feel like the one thing that is hurting him at this point in his career – is the explosive change in direction that you need at tackle. Mm -hmm. and, and if you could move him inside and he's lagging a little bit of what he used to at, at tackle, uh, dude, he'll be so he'll be still be quick for a guard at that point. Yeah. Yeah. It was just I, I would love to see him on some of those pulls. You know, right. J, you know, when you're talking about the trap game, I don't know if JP gonna be about all those traps. No, nah, you know? that's what <laughs> they, don't, they don't call him, so he ain't gotta worry you know, about it. But you know what though, <laughs> like you, we used to run that, uh, the, like the sprint draw, and JP was running that shit so nice, where he would yeah. toss the end, run up field. He loves go up field. Open field. He'll mm. he'd like to get on the outside and run open field. I don't think he's gonna want to be trapping a three technique or pulling up inside for a backer or anything. But mm. one thing I saw this week. Well, that's uh, the guard like, life, though. Well, it depends. <laughs> <laughs> It all varies. <laughs> Bro, but one thing I've been noticing is they keep trying to run these schemes where they're pulling their guards around outside to lead around the edge or mm -hmm. trying to pull them backside to, like, either – but they're, they're pussyfooting around the read. They're, like, clogging it all up for everybody. You know what I yeah. mean? I think that's – they're having young guys out there rather than just somebody that's, you know, smart enough to be like, shit, I don't even know who I'm going to get, but I got to clear something out here. Yeah. Or they're not getting deep enough on their pulls to get around the end if the tackle's got the end locked up, you know what I mean? Like everything of those outside runs is getting clogged up right there. Hmm. Well, man, I, you know, this is going to be interesting to see how they play this out, you know, just to see how it's going, man. There were a couple of times just sticking with the offensive line as well. You know, there were a couple of times where they showed Kelsey and this was when they were in the no huddle and man, they showed Kelsey just roll his eyes and get ready to get down in the stance and it just looked like Kelsey just looked, you saw something in his eyes where it was like, man, I'm so tired of this shit. All right, let me get down. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Did, did you see that a couple of times when they showed him close up? It just really looked like, I'm like, damn, this might be Kelsey's last year, I'm thinking, man. Cause just, just because of the way he looked, and you can see it sometimes in the player's eyes, where it's like, damn, it looked like Kelsey was just like, man, I know it was no huddle. But it was kind of like a damn. All right, let me get my ass down in this stance. I just, I just, <laughs> well, I just think he's mind. tired, bro. I just think he's tired of fighting for his damn life every game, every yeah. week. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like he didn't want to come back and play ball to do that for this year. You know what I mean? Scratch mm -hmm. and claw every game with a ragtag group that gets patchwork together. You know what I mean? That's got to mm -hmm. be like real heavy on him, trying to like go out there and and still carry all that every week, but. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it'd be nice to see them get a couple dubs where they might be able to let somebody else get out there and snap or they're not, you know, they're not trying to trying to win the game and they, you know, get a little cushion or something. Who are you going to put out there, though? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the problem. Who, are you, who, who 
Because I know, I know, with, with I'm sure Isaac gone, sign somebody this week. <laughs> well, with yeah. Isaac gone, that that was your backup center. So I know Nate Herbert can snap, but who who else would you put out there? You, hey, you, hey, hey, you you better fucking find somebody. You better find somebody <laughs> quick. And you know what? If you got a nice lead, that's a great time to get them some fucking game reps. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a bit dangerous, but okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a bit dangerous. <laughs> it's dangerous not having a backup center. Yeah, because I mean, you fuck right. You can break a damn quarterback's finger, man. Fucking around with that snapping yeah, the ball. If you don't know boy. what you're doing. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you I think know. I think somebody on there has to have some experience snapping, like one of their linemen. Nate, Nate Herbig is the one. Oh, okay. He was, yeah, because remember on, on the one play yeah, um, against, against Pittsburgh? Play center. Yeah, he snapped. Yeah. Right, right, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So but he's your right well, guard. He's so a who, starter, though. He's no, yeah, he's a you, starter. So you who's going to. You put, you put Peters in there. <laughs> 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 hey, could you imagine? Could you imagine them putting Peters in at the end of the game? To snap? To, no, to bring Kelsey out. Oh no, that would not. No, that no, that would not happen. I couldn't imagine that. Like JP, oh. <laughs> JP you might him out? Him like, me. Yeah, be like, are you for real? For who? For what? That's the way. Yeah. I, no. For who? For what? what? <laughs> Man, get out of here with that dumb shit. Yeah, that's not. <laughs> that's not happening. Oh man, so man. All right, so we we talked about the offensive line, man. The receivers, I feel. You know, to me, man, I think Carson plays better with lesser perceived lesser talented receivers. You know what I'm saying? To me, I, you know, because I know a lot of people think, well, well, you got Deshaun Jackson, you have Alshon Jeffrey, guys that that are established in the game, that have names, that you know, you go to their high, you know, you see all their trophies. You know, these guys have made some plays, but. Now you have a, a younger group. To me, it seems like Carson just plays better with younger, hungrier players instead of guys that are more established and, and had been around the league a little bit more longer. How, how do you guys see it? I mean, there's a lot of truth to that. I mean, if you if you go did back, we already to talk about this before. I think at, we did. No <laughs> but, but it keeps going though, because I because I hear going, it go right? again. Because here we go again. This is his first 300-yard game. I mean, he had 346, uh, 346 yards, two touchdowns, one interception. You know, so when yeah. you have, you know, when you got um, uh, Fogelm out there catching everything, Rodgers was a big-time target for him, you know, because now you don't have you don't have uh, Ertz out there. So now right. it seems to me you don't have to try to force Ertz into the game plan. You can try to find other players that you can just spread the ball around. And when you look at – his receiving list, I mean, you know, look at how many players have got targets from him in this game. I mean, you're looking at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven guys were targeted in that game. Now, you know, usually you don't see that much coming from Carson. No, he usually has his favorites and he sticks to it. Um, but I just think, like you're saying, dude, maybe he doesn't feel the need to give one person the ball so much if he's got a bunch of you know, somebody's out there that, that quite, haven't quite established themselves yet. You know what I mean? Like, he mm-hmm. doesn't feel like, ah, shit, I got to get hurt. And he probably, he probably doesn't say, ah, shit. It's probably something like, oh, gee golly. I, oh, I, yeah. I, oh, shucks. Oh, shucks. <laughs> I got I to get, get my boy hurt. Uh, you know, his five his five touches. And, yeah. uh, oh, man, I got to get DJ his, his, his grabs or he's going to be – He's going to be all upset with me. You know what I mean? And these guys yeah. are just out there excited to be on the 53-man roster catching balls. You know what I mean? They're like geek to get it thrown to them. So I think that, that there's probably something to be said to that. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah I those guys are hungry, man. You know, and, you know, he he plays that, that, that style of football, that rugged style of football where, you know, it's just drawn up in the dirt. And at, at whatever cost, whatever it takes. And, right. mm-hmm. you know, when he plays with guys, with younger guys who has that same hunger that they just want to be out there, like you said, Todd, like, hey, I'm in a, I'm in a national football league. Carson Wentz is throwing me passes. Like, fuck it. I'm going to go balls out. Like, the, the right. one kid, John Hightower, he made up. He dropped the one pass uh, against the Ravens, the one bomb. But then this week, he caught the, the, long, the long 59 yarder. So, you know, it's just – like some development and some growth being made. And 
uh, you know, I I like it. Fuck it. You know, if if these guys gonna play yeah. for you, if they don't have any egos blocking, like how many mm-hmm. balls they're gonna get, because you don't hear any of that. Like no. you don't hear, you never hear that from like the younger guys. They don't complain about playing time, snaps, or reps. They just I'm out there on the field and I'm contributing. And yeah, that's all that. That's all that matters at this, at this point. Yeah, I will say the about. It was nice. It was, I felt like it was a nice energy to having D-Jack back out there, brought out there. But, you know, I just wanted to make that point since you said he's probably never going to be in an Eagles uniform again. You know, he brought a nice a nice energy out to the field. I felt yeah. like, you know, that they, they used him well. Uh, I, I felt like he impacted the game. And, and it was it was looking promising having him back at that point up mm-hmm. until, you know, whatever happened. But, yeah. yeah. I think that I think that we really it's exciting to have this young core moving forward. Yeah, I, th- I think it's and it's something that Car- a group of guys that Carson can grow with, and I think that's important for him. You know what I'm saying? But but before we move any further, let's get some bills paid real quick. This season is full swing and the action is still unfolding. So head head over to the DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top rated sportsbook app. With so many storylines across both professional and collegiate sports, this is the time to check out all the DraftKings Sportsbook has to offer. If you haven't tried the app yet, head to the App Store now because you don't want to miss this. To celebrate the showdown in Happy Valley, DraftKings Sportsbook is giving all new users a chance to turn $1 into $100 when placing a bet on either Ohio State or Penn State. Additionally, DraftKings Sportsbook is giving all new users the chance to receive a sign-up bonus up to $1,000. On top of those great sign-up offers, DraftKings offers great odds boosts every Sunday to help you make it rain. DraftKings is, DraftKings is safe, reliable, and secure, making it easy for you to deposit and withdraw your money at your convenience. First, download the, the top-rated DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code SIDE, S-I-D-E, when you sign up to get this can't-miss offer. Pick either Penn State or Ohio State, bet $1 on them, and cash $100 if they win. That's $1 to win $100 when you use promo code SIDE, S-I-D-E, during sign-up for a limited time, only at DraftKings Sport, Sportsbook. Must be 21 in order, Pennsylvania only, in partnership with Meadows Race Track and Casino. Bonus compromise up comprise of a first deposit bonus and a first bet match, each up to $500. Deposit bonus requires 25 times playthrough. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. All right, pay some bills. There we go. DraftKings. Download that. Solid. Yeah, yeah, DraftKings. Yeah, DraftKings, man. Get your, get your yeah. bet on, man. You know what I'm saying? Do something. Put some money yeah. on. Yeah, man. So here we go, man. So let's get but back into it. Don't be a it. degenerate about it. Yeah, don't be a ge- <laughs> degenerate about it. You know, call 1-800-GAMBLE if you have a problem, you know. Make better selections. But all right, so here we go. <laughs> so here we go. Let's get back into this, man, because, I mean, there's so much going on, man. So now you get – let's switch over to the defensive side of the ball, man, because uh. we, we saw some characters – you know, emerge in this game. You know, first of all, I don't know which came first. Was it the Green Goblin or the White Snake? Because the White Snake, yes, the White, the oh, White, the, okay. the White Snake. <laughs> Yo, is that is that White oh. Goblin? The, the White Snake. I, 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 I don't, yeah, he he came with it. Hey, everybody got their thing. Hey, remember when Trotter started splitting wood and everybody was like, what the fuck is he doing? Yeah, who knows when he actually started tri- splitting wood. Uh, so, yeah, man. So, <laughs> I'm not sure which one came first. But the Goblin the goblin had a, an amazing interception. I went back and watched the play. And, I mean, the focus <laughs> on that interception was ridiculous. And, and, I'm, and I'm mad at the broadcast because they did not allow, they did not show the goblin celebration. No, no, one no they didn't show Damn. much of the, go, the goblin. They celebration. cut my dark shine off. Yeah, oh, man. Man. he was yeah, gonna they, show his ass too, boy. Oh uh, uh, yeah, you know he was gonna give you a, a whole lot of flexing, and, and you know <laughs> and who, who knows what else was coming after that. But I thought that was a huge interception. Great focus to see that ball in and and, and, and to get it in. I, I I just thought that it was a hell of a play. Yeah. Yep. Yep. All right. Caught it. 
Yep. Yeah. He caught the ball. Great job. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all, right. So, all right, so we got that. And then, all right, so then we're going to fast. We got the white snake. He comes off of a, a side blitz. And he got, he got, he ended up getting this interception. I thought that the blitz was nice. I kind of liked seeing the white snake blitz. Uh, you know, yeah. he, he's a fast guy. I mean, he was the, one of the fastest guys in North Dakota I, I, or South Dakota. I don't know which Dakota he's in. So he was one of so that's what the fuck that shit was. Yeah, that, that not, little, as, not as yeah. not, not as fast as some receivers, but he is fast. Yeah, he was one of the fastest guys out of Dakota. Yeah. So, so then when he got the interception, he gave yeah, you but the But isn't foot. Carson from the Dakotas? Yeah. Was Carson one of the fastest guys from the Dakotas? <laughs> not faster than the White Snake. Mm, you sure about that, dude? I remember Carson <laughs> being touted about his athleticism when he was coming out of college. Yeah, but then they said he had a photographic memory as well. So, <laughs> yeah, so I don't, I don't know. It happened. Yeah. It happened. Yeah. Yo, how do you prove that? I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> do you like flash him something real quick and then take it away? Like, all right, what was that? What, what, <laughs> I need you to describe everything that was in the picture. <laughs> how do you test photographic memory? That's what we need. We need somebody to let us know how do you test photographic memory? I, you know. Because, yo, what if one of us had that power right now? We don't even know it. I know I don't. My memory is fucked. So I don't well, know. Well, yeah. I, Got the opposite of it. Yeah. You don't. <laughs> <laughs> I totally forgot about that photograph behind you, Jack, until you showed us along. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but my, my memory is shot. So, yeah, I have no idea with photographic memory. That, I guess that would be awesome. Yeah, probably not something the offensive linemen possess. When they yeah, no, yeah. No. But either way, so the White Snake, he was the fastest guy out of the Dakotas. So he gets the interception, and he comes with the celebration. He gives you the snake. How did you feel about the celebration? How did you feel about the play? And then the celebration. How would you rate the celebration? The White Snake. That was a pick? I thought he got a sack. Yeah, I thought it was no, a it sack. No, it was a sack. That's what I said. It was a sack. Yeah, you said yeah. pick. You, I you said misspoke. pick. You said interception, okay, actually. Okay, you actually bad. said the entire, like, four syllables uh, yeah. interception. I, I, I thought I was talking – well, we went Jalen Mills. <laughs> and, the and then now we're at the White Snake with the sack. Okay, so yeah, – No, no, yeah. I, I thought it was solid, bro. The, there was, the White Snake was striking. Yeah. Yeah. He was so striking. He came, striking. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so the White Snake – there striking. <laughs> Well, so, the with the gym or something? Like, yeah, no, the white snake was out there striking. Oh, <laughs> God <laughs> damn. Hey, white goodness, baby. <laughs> white. Yeah. W-H-I-T. Yeah, the snake. Yeah, the snake, man. So oh, the snake I, like I like it. I like it. Why not? Hey. Why not? make a play. Celebrate, you know, that's the thing they're supposed to do now. I just, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Let your personality show, man. Yeah, yeah. that's what I'm, Andy I'm used to say. Hey, get out there and let them white, make... His is a white snake. Uh, yeah, he's okay. a white snake. Yeah, cool. he's a white... Yeah, I, I think it's cool. Yeah. I, I do too. Like, it's actually, it's kind of catchy. Yeah. So, okay, so... It, so if you had Great a Halloween couple... costume idea. Yeah, you know what? Like the dude, like the thing I tweeted out where the dude was like, "I'm a snake, I'm a snake." Have I'm you seen snake. that? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm a snake. Yeah, yeah. Slithering so, in my garden. Yeah, <laughs> slithering around. I'm a snake. <laughs> oh <laughs> I'm a snake. man! Yeah. I'm a snake. <laughs> I'm so, so you got the, <laughs> you got the white snake, man. So he's striking, he's slithering around in the garden. And then, it's Halloween, right. bro. It's, it's, it's Halloween season, bro. We got snakes yeah. and goblins all over the place. Snakes and yeah. goblins all over the place, man. It's, it's just wild, man. So then, all right, so you got the white snake. He makes a big play. I thought that was a huge sack. You got the green goblin. He uh, had a nice interception. And you got Daniel Jones. Strikes out, just breaks out of nowhere. And they say that the man ran 21 miles per hour. Bro, they said that he ran like almost as fast as what? Uh, Tyreek Ty Hill. Yeah. Yeah. Like they only said, like only like hundredths of a second off or something like yeah. that, right? From Tyreek yeah. Hill's fastest I, time. I don't know if I'm buying all that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 
Right. And I can Pete, I can tell hey. you I can tell you exactly when they clocked it. Peak when? speed was definitely right when he had that. Well, he started to stumble. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he so he hit top speed on the fall. On That's the what fall. it was. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, he needed to he needed to envision that uh, finish line ribbon a little further ahead. <laughs> oh man, dude, I can just imagine in his head. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, they should be so <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> no. 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 Hey, no. But I tell you what, he did not want to get off the ground after and, that. Uh, no. he, he really oh. wanted something to be hurt. Please, something be oh, hurt. Oh, man. Talk about please, the all time backfires. Please, man. something please. be hurt. What happened to some other white white dude this weekend on the sidelines? He 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 fell down too. Nobody around him. I think it uh, was uh oh man, I forget who it was. Somebody else. Now somebody else, else right? Out there. Yeah. <laughs> Wide open, just turf monster. Got him. Oh, Two tackles on the week. Oh dude, man, but, dude, but, that yeah. night uh, like that was amazing. It was funny yeah. as shit, man. Especially the thing you retweeted, Trey, Trey, since you put up. Oh, yeah, where he's like, I, I, my stride is, I'm a gazelle. I'm a, I'm a beautiful gazelle human. I'm a, a beautiful gazelle being. I want to say, shit, I should have took my shirt off. Damn it, I should have took my shirt off. Oh, man, that was hilarious, man. Yeah, uh, man. It, it, you uh, know, man, that's like, that's almost as bad as the butt fumble, man. yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I it's, mean, it's pretty high up there because I mean that was a touchdown. And he was that, that, digging, man. He I mean, go and, and digging. no one in our secondary could catch him. So I mean, you know, no, I mean, thirty-one gave up. Yeah, he was done. He was like, God oh, dang, he's just as fast as Tyreek Hill. Yeah. He's only a couple milliseconds milli from Tyreek Hill. Him. I can't catch him. You know, where's the white snake oh, when you man. need it? Where oh. was the white snake? <laughs> That's what I'm trying to figure out. Where was the white snake? Uh, uh, well, well, everybody got A, man. Every, everybody got caved in on that play. They went uh, for the fake, and he just bootlegged that thing. And Hey, we needed was, a DK Metcalf. <laughs> yeah, we needed DK yeah. Metcalf. Yeah. That's what we needed. But that's, that was a chance for the white snake to show that, hey, I'm the fastest motherfucker out of the Dakotas. Man, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and it wasn't so, you know. Is that a big I mean, claim? Is that a big claim, though? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> the fastest of the Dakotas? Is that a big claim? Is that a, that, that's a thing? <laughs> the fastest of the Dakotas? <laughs> I mean, it sounds like, like maybe it would have some validity if you were talking about gun draw, quick draw. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? like, uh, yeah. The fastest this side of the Mississippi. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I, mean, I didn't. But, but, I don't but know being, about like somebody doing like a running a foot race, being the fastest out of the Dakotas. Yeah, 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 <laughs> <not the> same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like being the best at like tetherball or some shit. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. tetherball champion. I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so you know, we wouldn't really need the snake to make that play, man. But you know, Daniel Jones, he he struck out and he's like running 20 something miles per hour man and that's like the thing to do now i guess everybody tracks speed i mean you know yeah but i mean but on the serious though man i was a bit you know even though <clears throat> it didn't it didn't turn out the way we thought it was going to turn out at the, at the end because they were down two scores man they like the giants sure gave away that game man they dropped yeah. the touchdown pass and the fucking quarterback yeah you know he did eat, eat his face yeah. The, uh, the the tight end Ingram man, he was wide open. Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, that's what one in five teams give you, you know. Yeah, and I, I think that you know Carson just coming down the stretch, man, showed a lot of heart. You know, just going in there and scoring twice to get him the lead. You know, uh, I thought that you know finding Boston Scott in the end zone was a huge play. You know, because uh, you had Kelsey, he got the little hands to the face, and a lot of people, you know. That shit happens all the time in the trenches, man. <laughs> Catch, you know, you go, man. First of all, with all of these penalties, that, we wouldn't have been able to play with the way they call some of this stuff, man. <laughs> like all this holding and all that shit, dude. Like we would have been called all the time. 
You know, yep. we were punching in the face all the time. Hands were in the yeah. face, you know, grabbing jersey, all that. I mean, that was all part of the game. And it's like they call every little thing now. And, you know, Kelsey got caught doing something that would have been just kind of a warning for us. <laughs> like, hey, 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 7 2. <laughs> Seven two. Get your yeah. hands down. Get your hands down. I'm not gonna tell you again. Yes, exactly. Dang it, you know? seven two. I'm not gonna tell you again. Hands yes. down. Yeah. You know, okay. you get that warning, sir. I got you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Got yeah. you. And move again. Move on. And then four more players. Four players later, I'm gonna put that hand right back in the face again. I mean, you know, that's how we played hey. the game. But now, yeah. now it gets called. Everything gets called, man. It's crazy. Yeah, it is. Yeah, bad, you know, I, I, I was wondering about that because one thing that I noticed is on our defense, and I was sitting there watching this, you know, during the game. This is some of my thought processes. We don't have a, that player that's coming downhill from the secondary and smacking somebody in the hole. Like, mm-hmm. you know, we don't have like a Dawkins or a Malcolm Jenkins or somebody that's coming in and laying the wood and uh, on an opposing team's running back, and they could be fearsome. But is that because of the change in the rules of, of the style of play? Like, that's not allowed to, to happen anymore, really, without getting a fine. You know, I see guys coming in with their hands or guys coming in, like, like kind of, like, turning their back to, the, like, yeah. the ball carrier and stuff. And I'm like, what, what is this? And so I started thinking about it. Is that because of the rule change and the fines and, and all the crazy helmet to helmet and targeting and stuff like that? Maybe, but even still, like, I think we don't even, we're never in position to even make that play. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, it seems like most of our tackles, like, everybody kind of wads it up, but you don't ever see anybody just hit the hole and make that. You could still get, I think you could still create a nice thump in the hole, you know what I'm saying, without it being a legal hit. But I don't see any of our guys playing downhill anyway to that's even what I'm make saying. that hit. Like, if you got somebody tied up, you got a ball carrier tied up, there's nobody coming through and like delivering that cleanup blow. They're all just like, all just like, Hey, let me grab this arm and you grab that arm and Hey, mm-hmm. make sure you try to rip the ball out. You know, there's nobody yeah. like, they're not playing football. They're, they're trying to play takeaway. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. I mean, R- Rodney McLeod, he's pretty physical back there. I mean, he'll, he'll lay his body out when, when given the opportunity, but you know, I know what you mean. You want that intimidating fact they need a, like a fucking Jeremiah Trotter at linebacker, like somebody that's just gonna, he's gonna take on linemen, fullbacks, running back, tight ends, anybody. They don't have that enforcer. And mm-hmm. that's what you need, man. You know, it's like you said, if, if, it, they don't have that person because of how the game is changing. It's like they're taking the THC out of the weed, right. you know? Right, right. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 like, what is that? Like, like, yeah. 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 You can't take the THC out of the weed. Right. What does that do? Right. What are we doing? It's not even football anymore, you know? <laughs> it's not even weed anymore. Like, what is that? <laughs> Yeah, but I understand that, man. You know, it's like, you know, guys ain't trying to get fined. And then, like, I think uh, last night and last um, – over the weekend, the one dude got ejected uh, yeah. from from the um, the Washington football team mm-hmm. when he hit the quarterback. And I'm like, damn, they ejecting guys in the NFL too? Like, mm-hmm. so I thought that was just like a college thing. But apparently, man, you know, they ain't trying to give everybody CBD, man. Yeah, <laughs> just try to give me CBD down. Body check. Body yeah. check. <laughs> Speaking of body yeah. check, so we on beat CBD and body check. Go ahead, Todd. Tell us about the business, man. <laughs> oh man, I didn't write anything down, so I'm gonna have to wing it again, guys. Right. Um, do you ache? Do you have inflammation? Do you have trouble sleeping at night? Well, then I have a solution for you. It's an all-natural plant, hemp-derived. CBD. Uh, this company I started with my buddy Riley Cote, a uh, former enforcer of the Flyers, Philadelphia Flyers. Yeah, go Philly. Yeah. Uh, we started this hemp CBD company and we have all these different products, oils, capsules, uh, dog treats, massage oils. You think of it, we got it. Hey, you even got some nice shirts if you want to go buy it. Um, my wife takes it. My mom takes it. My dog takes it. My mom's dog takes it. So if you want to give it to anybody that you love who is suffering from anxiety, inflammation, trouble sleeping, uh, or just wants to try taking CBD because they hear it's the thing to do, 
then send them to bodycheckwellness.com. That's B-O-D-Y-C-H-E-K wellness.com and use special order code blindside for a 20% off with your entire purchase. That's bodycheckwellness.com. Coupon code blindside, B-L-I-N-D-S-I-D-E. Take it away, guys. All right. <laughs> there you go. Good job, man. You know what? One day I want to get Riley Cote on, man, and talk hockey. When hockey season starts. He can explain up, the hockey to us? Yes. Yeah, so he can talk the hockey to us, and we can, we can talk a little hockey, especially being an enforcer. Because yeah. I imagine you, know, you can get shit out of a couple of people. No, the mindset uh, of a hockey player is on some. Like, I know we are wild. But like hockey cats on some different oh, shit. The motherfuckers are insane, dude. <laughs> <laughs> like that, that's that's the only sport where I heard somebody like, yeah, he had a broke jaw, and then they like, yeah, but he can went on and played with like you know like it was like, yeah, <laughs> nah, like his jaw dude. was hanging off, and he was like, fuck it, he went out and played. Up. Yeah, dude, dude got his whole fucking front was knocked out, just spit out, and just went back in the game. What the yeah. Fuck yeah. Hey. yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey. Those yeah, are hockey, the real hockey. fucking like gladiators. Dude. <laughs> yeah, no. I know. I see those got blaze on this. <laughs> yeah. Well, wow. it, just so, it just seems so dramatic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I would love to get Riley on, man, and we talk the hockey with yeah, Riley. We'll have to have him on. Yeah, man. I'll tell you what, though. I never even realized that there was like literally he would just get geeked up to fight guys. And then yeah. sometimes you'd never fight a guy. And then you just have to go home with all your anger. Anger? Oh, man. That, Try that, to find that. somewhere to put it. Yeah. <laughs> well, it had, had, to be, had to be rough for the old punching bag at home. <laughs> yeah, you know, we'll talk to him about it. It's a yeah. crazy story. But, yeah, yeah, that'd be cool, man. I definitely want to get Riley on, man, just so we could talk about it, man. Do a, do a little – talk talk a little, little ho- the hockey with him, man. Right? Well, sure, man. So now we got to get ready for for Dallas Cowboys coming in here, man. You know, you know they're already down a quarterback, Andrew Dal- Andrew Dalton. He's, I mean, he's Dalton, whatever his name is. He's uh, he's dealing with concussion protocol because of the Bostic hit against Washington. So now we're just gonna have to see how this thing plays out, man. Hopefully, we can come out of here with another W. Who's you number know? three? Who's who's their who's their third guy? And go into the go into this whole bye week the right and the right rate. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> mm-hmm. Who's gonna play quarterback for the Cowboys this week? Do we know? Some, I think it was a rookie. Who knows? They put a, they, they put a rookie. Just, in. I, I didn't watch the game, but you know, it's the Cowboys, dude. They are pretty pathetic right now. Yeah, like yeah, they hurt. They're hurting pretty yeah, bad. Like, they, like the players turn on the coaches saying like they don't know what they're doing. They're not good at uh, in-game, like halftime adjustments. They don't do their job. Like, so like that's that's losing football, man. Like you, it shouldn't be that type of dissension coming out of a professional football team where the players are like just turn on the coaches in year one, week six, week seven. Like <laughs> in this division, you can win this division with six fucking wins. Yeah, I think, I think we're gonna finish six nine and one, but who knows? You know what I'm saying? You never know. Yeah. What, you, what, 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 what you, you you think we're gonna finish six nine and one? Well, the way it's shaping out, you know, the the you know they they kind of like play the rough part of their schedule early on, so now they're getting like some teams that are banged up. They're getting some teams that are not very good, which you know with Dallas, New York. Um. But then you got Seattle, you got New Orleans, and you got Green Bay, and you have uh, Arizona. Okay. So, <laughs> they're, only, they're only out of the woods and not to the body. So, <laughs> I mean, they got that one tune up, and then, you know, uh, I think they, they, they play Cleveland somewhere in there. Yeah, and then you got Cleveland in there somewhere. Yeah. yeah so, hey, man, you know, they, they, they catching that by at the right time. They're going to need it, man, because that's – Yeah, a, they got to uh, rest up. <laughs> rest up, boys. Road. That's a tough road, man. Yeah. Well, hopefully they can pull that thing off, man. We'll keep it going. I mean, if you know, if, if Doug keep coming back with these press conferences like he's doing that, I I don't think they're gonna pull off another game. <laughs> Ask them about the play. How do you run out of plays? <laughs> yeah, you know, and he he has to stop saying that, man. Just 
don't say that anymore. Don't, don't, Why, though? Yeah, Why? Don't say that anymore. Why? And, 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 and then this is almost the second time because he was late with the challenge flag, you know, and this is almost another chance where Doug has apologized three times in the post, post-game post interviews. This would have been his fourth time, Doug. Had they lost this game, the question would have been, Doug, why were you so late getting the challenge you flag the out? Challenge out right. you, know, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and sometimes when they catch Doug on the sideline, he looks defeated every now and then, man. And I just need him to like, man, come on, man. I need – Defeated, you got to look at his – look at the, like his press conferences. Like, it's like the questions get to him to where, man, like I want to say the other morning he said, well, y'all said y'all wanted to run the ball more, so I ran the ball. What? That's not what you do. <laughs> what the fuck is that? Like, why would you? Why? 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 Just because the fans tell you to run the ball, you don't, you don't, you don't re- revisit that in the interview and say you did it. <laughs> like, I'm like, dude, get a hold of yourself, man. Like, look at Bill Belichick. Give them nothing. Yeah, give them nothing. Give them nothing. Film. Like, all right, I gotta watch the film. Man. Like, no, he, I, I think he needs a lesson in like press conferences, man, because he gives the media way too much. Yeah, way too much, man. For well, sure, man. Nah, it was good, man, catching up with y'all again, dude. This was awesome. Hopefully we go ahead and get another W heading into Dallas, going into another, going into the bye weekend. Then we come back out of here with New York. So, hey, man, like always, good catching up with you guys, man. You guys be safe. And until the next time, we'll see y'all. Toodaloo, motherfucker. Hey.